doesn't say moderator, so I don't know what that means. And it says a clerk. And then in Article 3, it says we're going to elect a moderator, a clerk. A moderator, a clerk, and a treasurer. Are the temporary presiding officer and moderator the same? And is the clerk that we're electing in one going to also be the clerk we will be asked to re-elect in three? So the temporary presiding officer and the moderator are one and the same. The, mo the temporary presiding officer who we're about to elect will also become the moderator under number three? Is that what you're saying, Steve? Well, I think you do too, but it's very confusing. I just want to make sure we know what we're voting on when, so that so that we later don't get into a tussle about who we were voting for and which article. Okay, I, I see your point and understand it. So Article One is to elect the temporary presiding officer. And what is a temporary presiding officer? Is that you right now? No. It is not me. I have been elected. What um, will the temporary presiding the temporary officer? Temporary presiding officer, according to the agenda, will take us through Article 3. So does that mean the temporary presiding officer will not be able to be a candidate in Item 3? I can't answer that question now because okay. there hasn't been ruled or order yeah, decided yet. Right. I, I, I apologize, but I'm in no way a spokesman and I, I have absolutely no authority to make any decision right. whatsoever. And I apologize for not trying to figure this out sooner, but as I read this about four times this afternoon, I just was terribly confused about what who we're voting for when. And I hope somebody can clear that out. Okay. Uh, but, to make sure we follow the agenda, we are electing. The point that I'm taking us to is to elect a temporary presiding officer. Once that position is elected, then that person will continue the meeting. Hey, Stephen. Uh, Kyle Landis Marinello from Middlesex, and I nominate Susan Clark, the town moderator of Middlesex to be the temporary presiding officer and clerk for this meeting. John Brabant, Town of Callis. Um, I will second that nomination. Another nomination. Uh, Matthew DeGoda, Worcester. Do I have a second for that as well? We have two nominations. Are there any others? <coughs> Hearing none, the nominations are closed. What I'll do is go with a voice vote first. Sure. Do we have a discussion or question, please? Michael Duane from East Palm Beard, do we have a question? The microphone. So, uh, discuss the motion. Thank you. Michael Duane, East Montpelier, here as an individual, also serving uh, as East Montpelier town moderator for the next election. Just had a question, and uh, we're all friends, trust everybody. We're all friends. I was standing outside handing out agendas, and I saw Paul Hanlon and uh, Bill Kimmel walk down the hall about 45 minutes ago, speaking to each other, went somewhere, came back a half an hour later. I'd like to know what Bill and Paul were talking about. Thank you. Before we vote. So I find myself in an awkward position <laughs> because there are no rules established other than selecting nominees and voting for them. And I don't have the authority, 
I, I have no authority other than to call for nominees, get the names, and call for a vote, and then turn it over. I, what is, so I'm, I'm a, a little on, off base here, but would it be um, appropriate to ask each of the nominees to perhaps make a short statement? Okay, I, I sense consensus on that. So um, if um, Susan and Paul could each make a brief statement about their interest in serving as a temporary presiding officer. And you could use either that microphone or if you can bend this one, you can come here. So Susan seems to be coming first. Oh. I would like to or you can take this out. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for the confidence uh, uh, of the nomination. Um, and uh, I am happy to serve if that's the will of this group. Um, I'm also happy to participate if you choose someone else. Um, I'm the town moderator of Middlesex. Um, I have studied town meeting a lot. I've written a couple books about local democracy. I'm very interested in facilitating the will of this body, whatever that might be. I suspect you're going to hear the same thing from the next guy. <laughs> I'm Paul Hanlon, I'm the moderator for the town of Worcester, I've been that for 25 years or more. Uh, I was asked if I would consider running for moderator by uh, Matt Group. And when I arrived tonight, we, uh, Bill Kimball and I and Colin uh, Neal, who's the attorney for the district, sat down and talked about poverty rules. So that's what our, our discussion is about. Thank you. So nominations are closed. You've heard a brief statement from each um, of the nominated um, persons. Um, Susan Clark spoke first. So, and again, um, it can be voice, but also if you wouldn't mind holding up your yellow cap. All those in favor of electing Susan Clark as your temporary presiding officer, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. No. Okay. All those in favor of electing Paul Hanlon as your temporary presiding officer, signify by saying aye. Aye. Um, from my position, um, I see Susan Clark as having a majority of the votes. Is the, is the assembled group comfortable with that observation? I call for a division of the house. Who asked for that? My name is Matthew DeGroat. I'm from Worcester. I call for a division of the house. Uh, Matthew, at this point, all, all I can either do is a voice count or a, a ballot count where people actually turn in their yellow cards and we count them. But it doesn't make you stand up. I can't stand up. Well, you can't, but everybody else. Oh, okay. <laughs> or, yeah, we could ask people to stand with you. Yes, Matthew. Generally, in my experience, the, the house is shown by standing. It can't be done with the Okay. So we could ask to do the boy, vote by standing before I ask people to stand, um, would it be acceptable to the assembly that I ask Susan and Paul to help me count votes? <laughs> would, the, would town clerks be willing to... Um, quiet, please. How many justices of the peace do we have here? Okay, put your hands down, please. Um, I, I want to keep this manageable. I think if five people are counting, that's enough. I, 
I'm going to, I request that a, a clerk from each town assist with the vote. I'm more than happy to take a, an oath. Uh, do you get to administer it, Alan? Um, I have a sheet of paper that you can sign. This is going to be just like Calvin Coolidge, right? His dad like swore him in by candlelight. I'm, I'm there. Okay. I have one too that can be signed. 
You've got the official one, Rosie. I shouldn't say I'm happy to sign an oath. I should read it first, shouldn't I? Read it aloud. Oath of office. I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will faithfully execute the office of. This is the one. Oath of office. Yeah. yeah. Of uh, temporary. Um, what am I called? Temporary presiding officer. Uh, for the state of Vermont and will therein do equal right and justice to all persons to the best of my judgment and ability according to law. So help me affirmation under the pains and penalties of perjury. Thanks everyone for your confidence. Um, and for those of you who didn't vote for me, I will try to earn your confidence. Um, just a couple of quick reminders. Um, the reminders, um, uh, we, we heard a, a bunch of them and I just wanna go over just a couple more. These are things that town moderators are requ uh, requested to um, go over. Um, please, uh, when you speak, address your um, comments to the moderator. Um, this helps ensure that we focus on the issues and not on personality. So even if you have a question um, for another person, address them through the moderator. Um, I'm gonna try to make sure that everybody who wants to get a chance to speak before anyone is called on a second time. Um, let's see, we went through that one. Feel free to ask questions. I think we, this group has already shown they're good at that. Raise your hand if you don't understand what's happening or if you think a mistake has been made. You don't have to be a parliamentary expert. Just raise your hand and ask. Uh, here's what I want to do. How do I turn this into a motion? That kind of thing. Um, the rule, uh, the rolling, uh, role of the moderator is to help you, you accomplish your business that you intend to do. So if you ever feel that the moderator has made an improper ruling, raise your hand. Robert's Rules allows for the group to vote to appeal the moderator's decision, which is a simple process, nothing personal. Ensure that the moderator serves the interest of the group. Um, you can end debate by calling the question. I think most of us are pretty familiar with that one. Uh, if you feel that the conversation has gone on long enough, you can um, raise your hand. You need to be recognized and you can call the question. If we do it that way, it does require a two thirds vote to end debate. So sometimes it's just easier to wait until the debate dies down. Uh, so we don't have to vote on calling the question. Um, we can vote in three different ways. We can vote by voice, as we just did. We can vote by division of the house, as Matthew suggested, which is where you stand up or raise you know, a, a visual. Um, or uh, if we ever want to, um, we can use a paper ballot, um, a secret ballot. This is really important option to know about if you feel your privacy on a vote is important. Any voter can move um, to vote by paper ballot. And if seven voters in this room agree and want a paper ballot, then uh, by Vermont state law, we'll have one. Um, yeah. Okay, okay. Great, I'm gonna talk slower now. How's that? Is that any better? Yeah. All right. I'll read a brief civil invocation. This is something we do at our town meeting and um, lots of town meetings across the state. Welcome to this five town school district special meeting. We've come together in civil assembly in a democratic tradition that is older than our state itself. We come together to make important decisions as we deliberate, let's advocate for our positions, but not at the expense of others. Let's remember that there's an immense gap between saying, I'm right, and saying, I believe I'm right. And that our neighbors with whom we disagree are good people, with hopes and dreams as true and as high as ours. And let's always remember that in the end, caring for each other, for each other, in our communities and together, 
is of far greater importance than any difference we may have. So we are on, I believe, Article 2. Yes? Oh, yeah. What's the story with the clerk? The motion was for both offices. So should I be taking notes? Do we have a clerk for this meeting? Can I delegate you to be the clerk for this meeting? Or do, is, I, I, I'm just sorry, she was taking notes. I'm looking, looking to, let's see, somebody who knows about clerks. She's been hired to take notes. Please. She's been hired to take notes. Unless there's any objection, I'm going to count on you to be the actual official note taker for this meeting. Thanks very much. Uh, okay, so on to Article 2 to adopt Roberts or other rules of order which shall govern the parliamentary procedures of the organizational meeting and all subsequent annual and special meetings of the district. Is there a motion? And we'll need you to say your name so that for the record. Barbara McGandra, Callis, so moved. Is there a second on Article 2? Yes. Clear. Yeah. Second. Second. Okay. Can you just say your name and town? John Braven, Palace. Great. Thank you. Tell me if you don't get folks' names and towns and meet them. Okay. So Article 2 has been moved and seconded to adopt Roberts or other rules of order, in this case Roberts, rules of order, which shall govern this uh, parliamentary procedures of this organizational meeting and all subsequent annual and special meetings of the district. Are you ready for the question? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. And Article 2 to adopt Robert's Rules of Order has been passed. Okay. We are moving on to Article 3. Yep. What's, yeah, so. Thank you. Uh, my name is Michael Blaine. He's Montpelier. Uh, I, I move at this point that we uh, table and adjourn the rest of the meeting pending the result of the appeal that our uh, school district and parts of our school district have taken to the Franklin Superior Court in St. Albans uh, pending the resolution of that case rather than going forward with the rest of the uh, agenda. So I'm, I'm moving that we uh, adjourn the meeting to a time, to, excuse me, to, to an event certain, which would be the resolution of the court appeal uh, at Franklin Superior Court. Thank you. So it's been moved and seconded to adjourn um, to event certain, meaning until the, can I get the wording again, the Franklin County Superior Court? Until the uh, Franklin County, Franklin Superior Court rules. Rules. I'm, I'm, I'm amending my uh, motion to, uh, to, to, to the judicial process is concluded. To the judicial process is concluded regarding the appeal. I'm sorry. Sorry, thanks for that clarification. The, the case is in Franklin Superior Court in St. Albans. Um, my motion is that we adjourn the meeting until such time as the uh, judicial process, which could include any appeals from the Franklin Superior Court, are taken and the matter is resolved. I just feel, if I may, that that's the most prudent way to go forward because if we go forward, disband, uh, dissolve. Can, hang on, you can speak to the motion after we get the Thank motion you. on the Thank floor. <laughs> so the motion to adjourn uh, until event certain, the event being the, act, uh, the, the conclusion of the Act 46 judicial process is concluded. Do I have that right? And is there a second? Second. Okay, yeah, Craig Line seconded. So it's been moved and seconded. Um, okay, this is 
It's a motion to adjourn is technically non-debatable, but unless there's an objection, I'm going to entertain debate on this motion um, using the same protocol as motion to postpone. So what I'll ask you to do is limit your comments to this question of whether to put off this meeting or not. So the idea here is debate shouldn't stray into the merits of Act 46 or anything else. Please stick to whether this meeting should be postponed uh, and to what time. Um, this is a motion to adjourn to time certain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's that's what, yeah. That's what I think too, Matthew. That um, a motion to a motion to adjourn is not debatable, and a motion to adjourn to time certain um, or or uh, event certain is is debatable. Um, and so that's the way I'm going to rule on this. Um, so I so we will um, open the floor to discussion on this motion. Um, if you want to speak, you should feel free to raise your hand. We do have some portable microphones. Or if you're bold, like Floor, you can walk right up to that one. Um, but you do need to be called on. We know that um, standing up like that can be a little nerve-wracking for some, so we're also happy to, to um, have somebody bring you the microphone, um, preferably not the guy in the wheelchair. Um, <laughs> that would be great. That would be great. We really appreciate that. Um, so Floor. So, yeah. yeah. So first, I would like to know what the consequences are. Uh, I believe there's a lot of- Floor states state your name for the minutes, too. So, Floor B. Smith is Montpelier. I would like to know what the consequences would be for if there's any harm for us tabling this meeting. And second, I would like to know what if, if, what would, if the judge rules an injunction in favor of no consolidation with going ahead with this meeting, preclude that ruling for being true or better or less or nothing mm -hmm. Should somebody explain that? If there's confusion in the room about that. Okay, so Floor is looking for clarification and I think that we've got a room full of people with opinions, um, some of whom will probably be glad to offer their their answer on, on that. You wish you were, where, help, okay. Help, help. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. So Floor is asking a question and um, there's some hand gestures that seem to indicate that um, people think that the attorney in the room for the SU could respond to that. He's not a, um, a citizen of our five towns. So we would need a motion to suspend the rules um, to allow him to speak. Uh, so, um, is there any objection to allowing the attorney to speak? Okay, so that means that since there's an objection, um, we will require a two-thirds majority to allow the attorney to speak. Um, so, uh, all those in favor, and I'm sorry, what's your name? Do you, do you want a motion please? Sure. So, so moved, Carla, and I Wait, moved Excuse to allow him to speak. Madam Moderator, yep. who would you request that the attorney speak? Well, you know, that's a good point. Somebody Did Carl? In this meeting, this body needs to request that that attorney speak. You're right. Decide on what we should You're right. I was, I was doing this. We also need to understand what his role is here tonight. So, um. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, okay, hang on. We can, we can ask him to explain his role if we allow him to speak. And um, you, you're absolutely right. I was going with kind of hand gestures that people wanted him to speak, but you're right. We need a motion. Um, and I think, do you want to make that motion? It seemed like you did, or not? Yes. So, Carla and I are responsible to allow the attorney for the 
So it's been moved to allow the attorney for the school to speak, and is there a second? And your name? Allison Medell Pinister. Okay, so it's been moved and seconded to allow the attorney to speak. Uh, okay, so um, all those in favor of allowing the attorney to speak, um, it's two thirds majority. So um, why don't you stand and hold up your, um, all those in favor, stand and hold up your. Yeah. And all those opposed? It is not clear to me whether that's two thirds, which is not uncommon. A two thirds is a hard one to call, so we're going to have to ask our vote counters to come down. Um, we have, ju we, do we have, um, sorry, justices of the peace in the house? If you're a JP and would be willing to come down. May, may I just ask a question? Can anybody address the issues about why we would or why we would not? want the attorney for the superintendent union to speak. Can you say it on the mic so we can help you? So what, um, we're, what you're asking for is discussion on the question of whether, uh, of suspending the rules, which is allowed. Um, so would anyone like to speak to this question of whether or not to allow the attorney to address the body? Yes, uh, John Rayban, Town of Calus. Um, so I, I'm concerned, as we've already heard, the attorney met with a half, for a half an hour with our superintendent and one nominee, um, which may or may not be appropriate. Um, I spoke with the nominee, and it seems like it was totally on the right now. I will say that. But these, but, but, let me finish. Just please be polite. I, um, so my concern is there's, we do not know why that attorney is here tonight procedurally. Um, and I, I would suggest that he explain us why he's, simply why he's here tonight before we vote on this and what he anticipates his role would be. Um, Cause this is supposed to be a simple meeting, voting up or down the items on the agenda. And now we have an attorney who will have a, a position He's not going to be able to say anything unless we allow him to speak. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Charlie Aaron, and I'm a resident of Middlesex. I'm actually one of the attorneys on the uh, 46 cases uh, pending before St. Albans. Uh, you know, I think I support, I voted against it, but I would change my vote, and I'm going to vote in support of the attorney speaking. And the reason for that is money for I'd like to tell you my view as to what would happen. But you must all answer me since I'm an attorney on the case. I'll be a pro bono public I've been busting my hump and haven't earned a penny on this thing. <laughs> so, uh, but you know, nevertheless, nevertheless, right? Well, the chairman is there. Well, the chairman's got an agenda. So is the chairman speaking honestly or is the chairman, uh, uh, is he, is he, is he BSing? I think, I'm hopeful trust me to be honest, and in the same context, I think I'm hopeful we can trust the attorney from Sheehy for Long and then to be honest. He's an officer of the court, and I think he will give us a, a good view. We don't have to buy it. Attorneys don't know everything, for God's sake. Half the time you lose. So, you know, <laughs> I change my vote and I say, let's have a talk. Let's see what he has to say. So the motion on the floor is whether to suspend the rules and allow the attorney to speak. We've got a lot of stuff to talk about tonight here, folks. Is this the one we want to spend our time on? Um, is it? Yes? Okay. Keep going. Floor. I hate to have him speak again, but as the public, uh, as the public official, to me, having an attorney here today meant that I've been asked to comply with the law, and I want to know what the consequences are of people in the meeting today. And I think that's the reason is for all of us, the more information we have regardless in which side of this, is, we stand because there shouldn't be 
size right now. We're all working to weather towards same goals. Regardless of the size, the more information we have, the better it is. Otherwise, you know, look at the state of the country right now. Carla and I are East Montpelier on the select board at East Montpelier when we're going to make a decision. We try to get the information that we need that will help us make the best informed decision. And I trust the people in this room to listen to people who know what they're talking about and to evaluate it. Are you ready for the question? The question is whether to suspend the rules to allow the attorney to speak. Um, what I'm going to do is ask each of you to take a section. Yeah. So. Yeah. They do this in Switzerland. I've been to Swiss town meetings. They do this. They have a little person on each little section of the year. Crazy. Okay, all those in favor of suspending the rules and allowing the attorney to speak, please stand uh, with your yellow uh, thing in your hand. JPs, when you're done, you can walk right on up here and then we'll know that the people can sit down. I'm not sure if they're ready yet. Are they ready? JPs? Yes? Are you taking the numbers? Sorry? So we don't know whether they're the numbers. Yeah, he's collecting the numbers, so the total. I am. Yes, she was going to. I want to do that now. I mean, I would love to have somebody else do it. Oh, with the word? As long as you're going to have two thirds. We counted the number there. We'll get it from the town clerks once we get the number. No, it doesn't matter who's here. It's just two-thirds of who voted. Yeah. Okay. So it's, yeah. Okay, okay so, so that section. Does somebody want to do the calculation? I'll do it. Oh, yeah, got it. Okay, so they, that section is clear. Section in the foreground. Section in the back. Section in the foreground here. And this section is she's still counting. Looks like. How'd you do? Twelve. Sorry? It's thirty-eight. Thirty-eight. Just eight here. Okay, now return to your stations. All those opposed to allowing the um, attorney to speak, please stand. So much clearer this time. <laughs> I thought it was two thirds last time.
ayes have it, and we are going to allow the attorney to speak, and now he can even say his name. <laughs> sorry, vote total. Thank you. Yeah, the vote total, sorry, was 178 to 50. Now we know attendance. <laughs> Except for the people who were like, what? You didn't vote. Good evening, all, and thank you for uh, allowing me to speak. Um, my firm, McNeil, Buddy Machine, uh, represents the, the Washington Central Supervisory Union, and Bill Kindle asked uh, us, uh, a member of my firm, to come here this evening really to help out with parliamentary procedure uh, and to help out with questions that, that arise. Uh, so that's, the, that's really the purpose that, I was, that I'm here for tonight. Um, I'm not personally involved in the lawsuit or um, and following it like a lot of you, but uh, not intricately involved. Um, so my understanding of the, of the question uh, before the panel right now is what impact um, the postponing this meeting um, would, is that essentially it? What impact the, um, what impact the, um, the, the suit, if you will, with the injunction, I, I know there's many components to it, but delaying this, delaying this proceeding until the conclusion of the, of the court case. Um, Could you identify yourself? Yes, uh, my name is Colin McNeil. Um, I live in Burlington, um, and so I'm not a voter in, or, or a resident here. Um, and so, um, but my, my take on this is essentially that um, not being integrally involved in, in the suit is that uh, one component of the lawsuit is an injunction request. I think that um, um, whether or not you go forward to here tonight, if a, if a court issued an injunction, um, that injunction would be followed, regardless of the, whether you go forward here tonight. Um, the ultimate um, end game of the, of the lawsuit, my take would be, um, again, uh, when, when that process is finished, uh, you would be obligated to follow whether or not you go forward with this meeting here tonight. Um, there are currently, uh, the legislature has, has acted, um, and there are by statute certain mandatory things that um, the statute has directed uh, you to do um, as, a, as a body. Um, and. I think what one thing you should consider is that uh, until otherwise ruled by a court, the action of the legislature um, is valid and legal and um, should follow accordingly until otherwise, um, until otherwise the, the court has ruled. Thank you. So the motion on the floor is to uh, adjourn this meeting um, until the equity six judicial process is concluded. Is there other discussion? I'd like to, I'd like to speak from my view on it. Um, state, I was, state your name. My name's Charles Marion. Again, I, uh, full disclosure, I'm one of the attorneys uh, litigating at Code Six. I have a lot of experience uh, in litigation. I defended, successfully defended Act 60 against the town of Killington and was deeply involved in that. I have great familiarity statutory construction and business law. Uh, what I think we're really talking about here is we don't want to end up in this position that victory ended up in when Act 60 was passed. Victory was so ticked off, and you know, all 50 of them, was so ticked off at Act 60, it's not going to play. So they didn't, they didn't actually institute the education tax in the town. And thus ended up being twice the they otherwise would have paid. They cut off their nose to spite their face. And I don't want to cut off my nose or our nose to spite our face, even though I'm very eager to see Act 1546 to go down in flames. So I, that's all by way of precursor. This is what I fully expect to happen. Judge Mello is narrowly focused on this case. We argued our preliminary injunction motion on, our, on, uh, on February 15th. Uh, he, Although we asked him to give us a weather report as to which way he was going, he scrupulously avoided that, but he said he would reach a decision very soon. I also know that the administrative law judge, I'm sorry, the administrative judge was uh, assigning uh, 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 
judges to cases like this, that that office is very focused on the, on the policy issues involved in Act 46, and that this is a very important case in the state. So they chose the memo, they put him in there, he's working full time on it, and I would bet anybody a glazed donut that he's going to come out with a decision on the, on the PI by two weeks, maybe three on the outside, from the date of our oral arguments. And so what is that, why is that helpful to us? If I'm right, that means that we can suspend it, and this cuts a little bit against the, uh, the, uh, the motion before that all of us is here, which is to suspend it until there's final adjudication. But, if, and so, back to the cutting the nose is quite a face. If you wait until final adjudication, that could take longer, and it could get us past the July date, July 1, 2019 date, and it could create a lot of problems. What I'd like to see is, perhaps I should make this an amendment to get a little fuzzy on an amendment to your, to your, uh, to your motion that we suspend it until a date certain that the judge reaches a, a decision on the preliminary injunction or motion to stay, both of which we have filed in the court. Thus, if he rules in favor of us quickly, plus be us. Uh, I'm sorry, that, I information if I could. Yeah. On which side are you litigating it? Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, I'm fighting Act 46. I'm a plaintiff's attorney, I'm fighting Act 46. Well, I know you're, you're in the Attorney General's office. No, I used to be, not anymore. Uh, so, yeah, no, I'm sorry about that. I, egocentric, I thought everybody knew that. So, uh, yeah, so if we, if we, so if I'm right, and I, I think I'm right, if I'm right, we, if we suspend it for, for until a date certain, as opposed to an event, or not, yeah, a, 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 an event certain of the decision on the PI, if, if we get a stay, then we've avoided the kerfuffle that we'll have right now. If we lose the stay, we'll still be able to go forward with this meeting based on the fact that we have adjourned it to that date certain. No harm, no foul. They sent to me. So your amendment then, Charlie, is um, to amend the uh, motion to adjourn, and uh, to read the motion to adjourn until um, the Act 46 judicial process reaches a decision on the preliminary injunction? Right, let me be very clear on that. If the PI issues by Judge Mello, it undoubtedly will be appealed to the Supremes. But if it's issued, it will be the law until such time as either the Supremes reverse it or don't. So, uh, so that's why we only need to go as far as Mello to, uh, to, to um, get past this. So there's a motion on the floor to amend the original motion. Could you clarify the date that you think that will happen? Motion. And could we put right. a date in with your amendment? Because it's from my view, it's a lot endlessly well, endlessly. I think that's a sensible idea, but the problem is, okay, so to answer your question directly, we had oral arguments on the 15th, we filed all our cases before that, no post hearing memorandum that anybody filed. So all the stuff is before them, all they have to do is dig through it and try to figure out how to rule. My expectation is that he will rule in two weeks from our hearing, outside of three. So uh, what does that make it? The 15th, the 22nd, the 1st. Uh, outside the 8th would be my, so for the 1st of the 8th, uh, that's when I expect that he will rule. But Charlie, just to be clear, your motion is not date certain, it's event certain. Oh, right. So there's a motion on the floor to amend, and so we're discussing the amendment on whether to, um, uh, oh yeah, that's right, is there a second? Thank you. So name of someone who seconds? Okay, thank you. So it's been moved and seconded to amend the motion to adjourn until uh, the Act 46 judicial process is ended to now read until the Act 46 judicial process reaches a decision on the preliminary injunction. Okay, so discussion. Your name in town. My name is Alice Amy. My town is Montpelier. And I have a question for, I'm sorry, I don't know. So I'm going to read it. Um, 
Good for you. So, what Charlie said was once the PI was issued, that would be the law. My question is, what's the law now? Okay. So that's your question, and uh, unless there's an objection, I'll have Charlie answer that question. At least that's, if there are other people who'd like I to answer I don't them. know. That's why I'm in this litigation. It has nothing to do with my feelings about merger. It has everything to do with uh, statutory construction. The words of the Supreme Court is that it's axiomatic that the court looks to the intent of the legislation to decide what the legislation is meant to reach. And the intent of this legislation in the section that says goals, the intent of this legislation is to assist local decisions and acts that forward the five goals of Act 60. I'm sorry, 46. You cannot follow, you cannot, you cannot encourage local decisions and actions by forcing them to merge. That is not encouraging local decisions and actions. So in my view, the law is that the, B, the SBE got it wrong when they interpreted Act 46. Hi, uh, Julio Thompson, East Point Affiliate. Um, and was observed earlier that lawyers lose half the time in the case. My experience is that uh, when lawyers are predicting when judges will rule, both lawyers could be wrong. Um, so I guess the first question is, if it's so certain that the ruling would be in three weeks, I suppose the question is why not postpone for three weeks? Um, and second, I guess the legal question is, if the judge issues a preliminary injunction, um, does the Supreme Court have the authority to issue a stay of the injunction pending the appeal of the preliminary injunction? And if that stay is issued, then what the state of the law would be after the issuance of a stay of the time it would be for that? So those are questions. Are you addressing those to hoping Charlie will answer those? Uh, any, any attorney who's knowledgeable about the, the, the proceedings regarding either this matter or any uh, application for preliminary injunction that might be appealed. Okay, yeah. Yes, that, I, I'm sorry. Oh, Ch Charlie, I'll let you speak. I see another hand as well. Yeah, no, good. who also is an attorney, so. Uh, uh, I hear. Dueling microphones. Mike, do you want to walk up to the? Thank you. Have you called on Ruben first? I had I had called on Michael uh, and Ruben. I'm sorry, the lights aren't great. I didn't see you. I'd be glad to let you speak after Michael. Thanks. Let me just uh, let me just weigh in, uh, please. Thank you, since I made the motion. Um, Julio, in answer to your question, if the court uh, in Franklin County issues an injunction um, in this case, this is just a preliminary injunction, that can be appealed. So let's say the schools who are appealing get a preliminary injunction. The state could appeal that preliminary injunction to the Vermont Supreme Court. The Vermont Supreme Court could either deny the state's request to undo the injunction, or the Vermont Supreme Court could say, we're going to affirm the injunction. So either of those two are a possibility. And then the case will, from that point, go forward. Um, my view, if I may, uh, in response to Alice's question, some people think the law is the board's order of November 30th 2018, that that board order is the law. And included in that law is the Articles of Agreement, which uh, we have committees working on those. Included in the Articles of Agreement is an agenda that we are looking at this evening. So some people think the unit that, that our district has merged. Now, I happened to see a yellow bus the other day drive by on Route 2 and it said Washington Central Unified Union School District. So the buses think that we are merged. 
and and and, and uh, you know, and, and the opinion of the superintendent is that, and I think you know, the basis for it, and the agency of education, that the merger has occurred because of the board's order, and it needs to kind of go forward. But the articles of agreement don't really say that because we're in this transition process. So the bottom line is, Alice, the law is very unclear. It's very unclear, and. Um, Will the legislature step in again? The House passed something, but that's sitting on a wall in the Senate committee. Um, so the law is unclear, and that's why I made my motion that rather than, you know, that, that we need to postpone, adjourn this proceeding until we get some more clarity from the court, because the court case isn't going away. The only thing that I'll mention in terms of consequences, which was the floor question, I believe, last night, World Aid Central Supervisory Union had an organizational meeting just like this, and they voted to postpone their agenda, and they, they picked a date. I think the date they picked was like March something or other. So, thank you. So last night, another forcibly, forcibly merged district like ours had an organizational meeting, and they voted to postpone and adjourn to a certain date. So what that date would be, you know, so I think there's another meeting coming up tomorrow night, a couple more next week. So the, the law is unclear, but the law is unclear. And that was the basis for my motion. Let's let's just not make things more complicated by going forward. So, thank, thank you, Charlie. Sorry. So the, uh, the, the motion, hang on, the motion on the floor. Um, yeah, Ruben, I, I'm with you in one second. I just want to clarify the motion on the floor is to adjourn this meeting and, uh, sorry, to amend the original motion to, uh, and the amendment is to adjourn this meeting until the Act 46 judicial process reaches a decision on the preliminary injunction. So we're, we're discussing right now whether to amend it to add on that decision on the preliminary injunction piece um, other, uh, to, to the original motion of motion to adjourn until Act 46 I, judicial I process. I have been waiting very patiently. You go, boy. You go. <laughs> No, Charlie. No, Charlie. Stay. Well, PI stay. My motion was for PI to stay. Two slightly different things. Or stay. Okay. I have three things. Everybody in this room can read and see that Washington Central Supervisory Union on the side of the school bus is different than Washington Central Unified Union School District. That's my first point. My second point, sorry, Ruben Bennett for each month. Thanks, Ruben. Should have identified myself. My second point is that by saying no harm, no foul, as Charlie sort of casually tossed out, it really bothers me that asking the <coughs> citizens of five towns to come out and have a meeting to do nothing and asking us all to come out and do that again at some point in the future is no harm, no foul. I respectfully disagree. So this list of what we're supposed to vote on tonight is, it wasn't created by anyone in our five towns. It's not something that people in 
our five towns want to do, we're being forced to vote on these things, or if the five towns are appealing that decision, but all five towns agree we want to keep our lower borders. And there, there are questions about the consequences of, of what happens if we vote on these items. One of the things that hasn't come up yet is that there's a meeting scheduled, I believe, for right after this meeting and then another one for tomorrow for this transitional board that's going to be making decisions about what happens at the schools. And the supreme law of the land is the Constitution, and it embodies in there one person, one vote. This transitional board gives the town of Worcester, and I love you, Worcester, but uh, if you only have a little over 600 registered voters, it gives you three members on that board. And the town of Berlin, which has about four times that many voters, has two members on that board. There is no way that is a lawful representation. And I think it's crucial that the courts hear out this appeal. It's very common for agency actions to be appealed. The courts will make a rule, and I, I disagree with Charlie's amendment. I think we need a final order from the Vermont Supreme Court that settles this issue before we get power to make real decisions in our schools. I have three kids at the Rummy Elementary School. We just found out we're losing our principal. We need a new one starting this fall. Who's going to hire that principal? I know my local school board members, a couple of the about to be new ones are here tonight. I trust them. I want them hiring our principal. But that principal is going to be paid for in the next fiscal year, and we're hearing that the transitional board has authority over that. That's not right. The courts need to rule on this. We shouldn't be doing any of the things on this item. We don't have to do any of the things on this list of items because we still have democracy now. And we should postpone all of this until there's a final ruling from the Vermont Supreme Court. My name is Richard Cade. I'm a resident at Palace. I'm not a lawyer. Go closer to the microphone. I'm not a lawyer. I'm a resident of Palace. But I, I applaud Charlie and Michael. I think the lawyers have actually supported. that the motion on the floor is to amend 
the motion to adjourn uh, until uh, the Act 46 judicial process is concluded. We would be amending it to until it would reach a decision on the preliminary injunction or stay. Yes. Uh, Nice and loud, Matthew. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm losing my voice, so I'll try to speak up. Uh, you know, I think that uh, there's a reason why the lawsuit was, was filed. Um, there's a reason why uh, there's been a lot of advocacy in the legislature to try to ask legislators to amend or, or change uh, the terms of the law or even rescind it. But neither of those things has happened yet. Uh, and we are not good. Given the timeline that we, we have laid out for us and the legal necessity of warning meeting to elect new board members and then warning meeting uh, for voters to approve a, a budget possibly, the earliest that we could do that at this point, even if we acted tonight and tried to set dates as early as we possibly could, is, is roughly in the middle of May uh, that we would be able to, to pass that, that budget. Uh, so if we delay, Is there a second to calling the question on the amendment? Second, I have a question. Some, uh, point of information? Yes. Um, question, yeah, appropriate in this. Um, the question, I guess, is if the ruling on the preliminary injunction or stay happens, let's say, on March 8th, uh, when is the earliest that a meeting of this nature could then be held and held? It was a point of information, so I was glad to hear it, but it does sound like a point of information that is about the content rather than the process. Um, so the question has been called, and it's been seconded, um, on whether to, um, whether to amend the original motion. So right now, what's that? Oh, whether to close debate, thank you, thank you. Oh, man, I love having two moderators. Whether to close debate. That um, requires a two-thirds majority. So what you'll be voting on right now is whether you want to close debate on this question of the amendment. If you are ready to close debate on the amendment, 
signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No, no, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. And uh, we have closed debate, and so now we will be voting on the amendment to the original motion. So the original motion went, it was a motion to adjourn until um, Act 46, I can't read my handwriting, until the Act 46 judicial process is concluded. The amendment, and you're voting yes or no on this amendment, is um, to change that to until the Act 46 judicial process reaches a decision on the preliminary injunction or stay. Okay, so if you want that amendment, vote yes, yeah, vote, vote aye, and if you don't want that amendment, vote no. All, me yes. A, a question, point of uh, information. So if I understand what we're at, oh, NSTV Wednesday at 10 and 10. All right, so what we're voting on now is whether to approve the amendment, and then we will then make a vote as to whether to approve or disapprove the amendment. Motion to return. So the two votes that two are votes. in question here, whether to amend, and we still want to move on to That's right. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. So if you vote yes, the main motion will be amended. If you vote no, the main motion will not be amended, but we will still have that amend the, the main motion to vote on afterwards. Okay, all those in favor of the amendment signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. I had a feeling. <laughs> okay, so we'll need our JPs down here again. Please, all my, my trusty vote counters. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have a standing vote. Yep. That's a division. So man your stations, staff your stations. We've got one here, one here, one here, one here. Beautiful. Okay. All those in favor of the amendment, please stand with your yellow tag. Favor of the amendment, please stand. And now, please stand, all those opposed to the amendment, please stand. Hold up your yellow tag.
What's that? They'll ask for the numbers. Yes, they will. Okay. Okay, so the ayes have it. The amendment passes. 171 to 50. So we're now on the main motion. The motion is to adjourn until the Act 46 judicial process reaches a decision on the preliminary injunction or stay. Is there further discussion? Matthew. Uh, with apologies, I would like to move to amend the main motion. <laughs> 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 to, to read uh, that the uh, date certain would be four business days following So the motion is to amend the main motion. So the motion to adjourn until the I-46 judicial process, no, until four days after business days at following the decision on the preliminary injunction or stay. And if someone wanted to make a friendly amendment, just actually pick a date. Well, just pick a date. That's an amendment to the yeah. amendment. I, 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 so I first. I think that's very smart. I didn't think of that. The <laughs> issue is issue Friday. So we have to be Friday? No, we should have. Uh, uh, Matthew suggests some certain number of days after the decision is. <laughs> so I don't know if this is a friendly amendment or just accept it or not. So the amendment is. So, so you, so you, you were just stating that you were in favor of that amendment. Is that what you're saying, Charlie? Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Is so? Are you seconding? May, may I change the amendment to, to just say March 12th? <laughs> so, do you want to withdraw your amendment and restate it? Because it hasn't been seconded, as someone pointed out. Is that what you want to do? I'm sorry, was that a yes or no? Leaving the motion. Leaving the motion to four business days following the preliminary injunction or stay. Is there a second? Second. Oh, Chris McVeigh and Middlesex. Okay, so the discussion is whether to, so we're back on that main motion and now we're looking at another amendment to the main motion and it would be instead of um, when we when the uh, Act 46 reaches a decision on the preliminary injunction or stay, it would be four business days following the preliminary injunction or stay. Is there discussion? Yeah, the motion has been seconded. Is that a point of order? Yeah. Mm -hmm. A point of order. If the person who made the amendment that just passed accepts what was just offered as a friendly amendment, yeah, thanks. Uh, I love the idea of friendly amendments, but when you go to moderator school, they tell you that it's sort of like something that's only on TV. But yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so next in line that is Craig. Line. Line is in line. I'm Craig Line from Callis. I have a question about a 30 day warning period required to warn such a need. If she's only got four days, it's not properly warned. Another, uh, well, I was going to say complication, but it would actually be a celebration, is uh, if the court rules in favor of the four school districts that are here that have appealed that decision, then this meeting never goes forward. So I think it gets pretty complicated. We try to actually set a specific date after the decision, and also the court may put some boundaries on what happens at we don't know what that order is going to look like. For instance, what the transitional court can look like. So I think it's much cleaner to just wait, see what the court order is, and then figure it out from there. Uh, Carl Wiki, Worcester. Um, I'm just curious if anyone in the room knows how much it costs to hold one of these meetings and what budget is being used. 
Um, is there anybody who would like to respond to the question of how much it costs to hold one of these meetings and what budget it comes from? Maybe it's going to be a rhetorical question. <laughs> I, um, I like the idea of uh, four days after the PI is determined. Um, it seems like a good way around potentially having to delay it for some much more substantial period of time due to warnings. I don't know the nuances of all those things, so I'll look to other people. I was just going to make a slight allusion that it'd be something like not to exceed seven days to give us all, or not to exceed ten business days to give us all a little bit more time Do you want to amend the amendment? I'm not sure. <laughs> Was that not sure or yeah, sure? I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure. Okay. My name is Jerry Bernstein from Dallas. I'm good at both cases. I don't know about you guys, but uh, my schedule uh, makes it necessary to have more than four days from something that gets published in the paper. I just think it's ridiculous to set something that close. Uh, to the uh, member from East Montpelier who thinks we're wasting, wasting people's time, I came here to vote to not continue this process. Yeah. It's not a waste of my time. I took an evening out of my busy schedule to be here to support uh, not merging our schools. There are many of us who feel very strongly about it. And uh, I respect other people's opinions, but I'm going to vote for the original amendment as amended with a, a date, and then we can let the body see once the decision is made by the court, when it's appropriate to warn, so we all have an adequate amount of time to come back here and vote when we get to the next one. Julio Thompson from East Montpelier. My concern is that um, voting to hold the meeting four days after a court ruling wouldn't comply with the state open meeting law, which requires the town to publish in the newspaper the date, place, and the time and location of the meeting. Uh, and uh, if the court issues a preliminary injunction, um, that isn't published in the newspaper not issued by the legislative body. If there's folks here who want to talk about the public meeting, I'm, I'm happy to hear about it. I'm not an expert on it at all, but I'm just reading the Secretary of State's webpage about the town meeting statutes, and it's pretty clear that it's the legislative body that's supposed to warn not less than 30 and more than 40 days beforehand. Um, and date, time, and place haven't been uh, suggested here, rather. It's an event that So is there additional com um, discussion on the amendment about the four days amendment? So you want to address? Okay. Yes, my name is Pat McDonald from Berlin, and I just wanted us all to remember about the timing. My concern is that if you have to worry, you better do it right, and we need the time to do it right. Uh, right now, Act 46 is the law. It's supposed to be merged uh, in June of 2019. There is a bill that was passed by the House about a week or so ago uh, that gave this body a year's extension. But that bill has to go to the Senate, and the Senate hasn't even taken it up yet, and I don't know what the outcome's going to be. So I just want people to remember that we need time to do it right. Uh, Gilbert Worcester, I'm reading from the Secretary of State's website, uh, his, uh, the open meeting handbook that is there. And this is a paraphrase of what's in the, the lawyers and the stuff that they've won. 1 BSA 312C4. Notice when adjourning or continuing a meeting. When a meeting is to be continued to a new time or place, the public body should announce the new time and place before adjournment. Otherwise, the subsequent meeting is considered a new meeting that must be duly warned as above. So in other words, the meeting actually doesn't end. We have the same meeting at 
four business days after the court decision that we're having tonight that doesn't have to go apparently through the same warning process? I, I believe that what you're saying, if I'm right, Alan, is that if we name a date and we're adjourning to time certain, we do not have to rewarn the meeting. However, if we, I think, the, uh, uh, if we uh, adjourn not to time and, and date certain, but to event certain, then we do have to rewarn. I, I, I can't answer that. I'm not a lawyer, and if we start the lawyers talking in this room, we'll really be here a long time. <laughs> Uh, I don't know a lot about parliamentary. Can you hear your name? Oh, my name is Tegan Diamond Brown. I'm from Taos. Uh, I was wondering if you do either or situation. Would this be a until the court makes its decision or at the latest, say March 15th, just so that we know we can get the ball rolling and we still have some amount of time to make decisions. However, we are going to wait a little bit to see if we know more information by, say, March 15th, which gives us a specific date so we don't have to worry about the warning. So you would amend. Mm, I don't know if we can amend this amendment. You could try amending this amendment. Rather than saying four business days following the preliminary injunction, you would, I think we have to vote this amendment down first and then we have to pick that one up. Okay. Or, or vote know. this one up. Uh, your suggestion, your, the, and so you'll need to stick around to make that suggestion, um, is to amend the original um, uh, motion to adjourn until um, Act 46 judicial process reaches a decision on the preliminary injunction or stay, or March 15th, whichever comes first? Yes, or whatever business day, or I don't know what state. Whatever date. Yeah. 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 Is there further discussion on the four business days amendment? Seeing none, we will, ready for the question on the four business days amendment. Um, this is, uh, you're voting yes or no on the amendment to take that main motion and change it so that it reads that we would um, motion to adjourn until Act 46 judicial process reaches a decision uh, until four business days after the uh, Act 46 decision reaches uh, its preliminary injunction or stay. Oh God, I just sh should have better handwriting. The original motion is to adjourn until the Act 46 judicial proce process, I'm sorry, the, the original motion has been amended, you amended it, so the, so the original motion is now. Motion to adjourn until the Act 46 judicial process reaches a decision on the preliminary injunction or stay. That's how it currently stands. And the question is whether to amend it to add the four business days piece in. So it would say the motion to adjourn until the Act 40, until four business days following when the Act 46 judicial process reaches a decision on the preliminary injunction or stay. So if you like that amendment, you'll vote aye. If you don't like that amendment, you'll vote no. All those in favor of the four days amendment, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Yes, oh, hang on, opposed, no? No. The no's have it, and the amendment fails. I'd like to call the question on the, on the on quote that you have now, the amended. Um, the question has been called on the main motion, although we did have some discussion of a second amendment that people wanted to do, but the question has been called on the main motion as amended. Is there a second on? Second. Okay. So um, the, main, the, the question has been called on the main motion. The motion is to adjourn until the Act 46 judicial process reaches a decision on the preliminary injunction or stay. There's no discussion on this. Everybody understand a yes vote is for the, uh, a, the a motion as amended. Do you have a point of order? I have a question. I'm concerned that by not saying a date certain, we are going to be having to 
question has been called on whether the question has been called. Yes, we vote on calling the question. So if you are done talking about this uh, main motion and you just want to vote on the main motion, you'll vote yes on calling the question. If you want to continue discussion on the main motion, vote no to call the question. Does that make sense? Yes, yeah, yeah. The, the main motion as amended, so it's now our main motion. So if you would like to end discussion and call the question, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. It's good. That's the two-thirds majority. We're going to have to do it again, guys. Okay, so um, it's unclear to me whether that's a majority or not. So um, please, can we have our voters down here and we're going to divide the House. whether to call the question, we're voting on whether to stop talking about the main motion as amended. All those in favor of ending debate on the main motion as amended, please stand with your yellow cards. Okay, and now all those opposed to calling the question on the main motion, this means that you want to keep on talking about the main motion, all those opposed, please stand.
All right, and the results of your vote are 154 to 60. A two-thirds majority takes 142. So the ayes have it, and we have called the question on the main motion. So the main motion, the motion is, as amended, is to adjourn uh, until the Act 46 judicial process is, uh, uh, reaches a decision on the preliminary injunction or stay. That is the motion that we are on, and we called the question, so now we have to vote on that. I ask for a written vote. Paper ballot? Yes, I do. <laughs> so we need seven people who want a paper ballot to raise their hands. There's been a request for a paper ballot, and if there are seven people who want a paper ballot, then a paper ballot there will be. Yep. So, yeah, so um, the question is, is there an opportunity to uh, vote on or discuss the amendment that was sort of chattily discussed earlier on? Um, and the answer is um, no. Um, we are going to vote on the main motion. If the main motion passes, then it passes. If it fails, it fails. Um, I'm trying to figure out about reconsideration. Yeah. So I think I think there may be an opportunity to reconsider it afterwards, um, but right now it's the question of the paper ballot. Are there seven people who would like a paper ballot on this article? One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, seven, okay. So there are seven people who have asked for a paper ballot. Point of clarification? Yes. If we go yes on this motion to postpone the meeting until an event's certain, if, for example, on March 8th, the court issues its opinion and the stay or preliminary injunction, when is this meeting removed? What day is that? It would have to be warned. So it would have to be warned according to the field of meeting. Okay. Point of information? Yeah. So the meeting would have to be warned. Uh, the earliest it would be would be in April. The earliest that an election of the board would have to be in late May or June. The earliest election of the budget would be in the month. So, we, uh, we're, we were calling them, yeah, we called the vote. It's true. It was a point of information that turned into a uh, more. Um, all right, so um, what we're going to do now is have, we have a paper ballot that's been called for. Um, and so you're being asked to vote yes or no on the main motion as amended. Um, if you vote yes, then you are in support of the motion to adjourn until Act 46 judicial process reaches a decision on the preliminary injunction or stay. If you vote no, then you're voting against that. Madam Moderator? Yeah. Rosemary Morris, Burlington Clerk. We have paper ballots at each of the stations, the clerks, so everybody will be using the same ballot. Don't use the yellow ones. Yeah. So these yellow things are not ballots. There are uh, blue ballots. And so I think what we're going to do is you're going to line up in front of your town clerk and you'll have your name checked off and you will cast your ballot. There's been a request that we go by section of the room. What do you think? Where's the ballot box? Okay, so this section, the one closest to the town clerks, go ahead and vote. Everybody else can hang out at your seat. We'll start over here. Okay, the, the kids are the election officials. No, I am. I'm an election official. Bless you. I'm here. Oh, I see. So they're going to pick it up and then vote here. Really nice to do that. Uh, yeah. Thank you. I mean, give
like Don Naylor called me yesterday asking me if I would do it, and I said I haven't been able to do it. The meeting wasn't even on my schedule. So I was, I was, uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure you could do it better than I would. Yeah, that's awesome. voted and you're carrying your ballot around wondering where to put it, the ballot box is up here now next, next to the clerks. So you'll have to make your way back up to put your ballot in the ballot box. of the vote on whether to adjourn, uh, motion to adjourn until the Act 46 judicial process reaches a decision on the preliminary injunction or stay. In favor, 168, opposed, 81. The motion passes and this meeting is adjourned.